Today we're looking at an important parallel and correlation between life and an empty wine bottle. It has some very powerful insights, particularly in today's environment. In today's world, everyone's worried about success. We get so focused on our public image, making sure we have the right personality, uh, put our best foot forward, have the right attitudes and behaviors, and take the right courses to maximize our production skills. We are endlessly looking for new and improved ways to excel in life. We want our families to look and be just right, from our kids, school, athletics, and music to our own uh, work, our particular work, uh, church and community involvement. We align ourselves to make sure we have the best reputation and relationships. In the midst of all of this, sometimes we lose sight of what's real in life. We're running the race hard and fast to make sure we succeed. We're so busy driving, we don't have time to fill up with gas. <laughs> you know, if, you, if we're honest, Many of us have become more human doings rather than human beings, and we're just absolutely exhausted. This video is a part of my life series where I parallel things in the vineyard, winery, and in the wine industry with different aspects of life. Today, we're talking about the empty wine bottle. As we go through this parallel, if this somehow resonates with you, I'd appreciate you letting me know in the comments below, and subscribe, and hit the little bell to be notified when there's a new post. And by the way, the subscription is free. Oh, and best of all, if this was helpful, share this with a friend. You know, when you look at an empty bottle, you might think, no, oh, there's nothing really unique about it. It's just an empty bottle. They're all pretty much the same. If you've seen one bottle, you've seen them all. But once you take a closer look, you begin to see that there are little nuances to the bottle. Some of the glass is, is thicker. Uh, you, you have a, maybe a little bit of a rib here or here. Uh, some are more slender, like you have here. Uh, some have big bottoms. <laughs> Actually, we won't go there. Uh, some have deep punts on the bottom. Uh, some have shallow punts. Uh, as you start looking at all of them, uh, you realize there are thousands of different types and shapes of bottles each being unique in its own way, in and of itself. Of the billions of bottles produced every year, there's a lot of diversity out there. Diverse components that like shape, capacity, color, material, finish. When you start putting these five components together, we end up with a pretty phenomenal menagerie of bottles. This can be pretty fascinating to a wine geek like me, but in the main scheme of things, Empty bottles are really not very valuable. On their own, wine bottles aren't necessarily showstoppers. It's really pretty simple. A wine bottle is truly valuable when it fulfills its purpose to hold wine. More on that a little bit later. Uh, but let's circle back and look at the diversity of bottles. Empty bottles, they're all a little different. Different shapes, different sizes, different colors. Uh, but every single one is a bottle. This is where this becomes pretty interesting. When you start adding labels to the bottle, billion dollar marketing companies do all sorts of research to figure out how to catch your eye and get you to buy a bottle of wine. 80 to 90 percent of people will buy a bottle of wine uh, based on how appealing the label is to them. They'll buy it again if they like the taste of it. If not, they don't, or so we think. The marketing companies and wine manufacturers know that once you like a, a label, and once you buy a label, regardless of how much you like the wine or dislike the wine inside, that you'll buy that label again. Research shows that uh, 25 to 30 year old guys are known to buy one type of label. 25 to 30 year old women buy a different type of label. As you go up the age scale, 
the labels keep changing. Then you superimpose the socioeconomic classification and the marketing companies got you pegged. They got a wine and a wine label for virtually everybody. They know that to the consumer, the label makes the wine. You know, how does that, how does that old adage go? Uh, the, the clothes make the man. Think about it. Glitzy and glamorous labels for certain people. Fun and friendly. Animals for the animal lovers. Body parts, well, <laughs> well I'm not quite sure what that's all about, but you get the, uh, the picture, you get the idea. You know, labels. You know, so often we get caught up in the external part of life, such as uh, living in the right location, being popular, and always uh, refining our hard skills. Before you know it, we forget about the internal stuff. Oh, oh, wait, wait, and let's not forget price. Now, many of you know that when it comes to wine, I like to find bargains. My specialty is finding the best wines in the world under $15, even under $12. But I do have to say, if your motivation is money and finding the cheapest option in both wine and life, then ultimately, in the end, the very end, you'll get exactly what you pay for. Whatever the lowest price is, you'll buy. <laughs> you know, I laugh. Sometimes I laugh literally out loud. No, I mean literally out loud when I hear uh, people uh, talking about buying the inexpensive name brand wines. In most cases, what they're looking for is an inexpensive buzz. To me, they're missing out on some of the best parts of drinking wine. Anyway, when it comes to bottles, this is the most important part. It's what's inside the bottle that counts. Things like flavor, complexity, topicity, which is uh, how it's connected to the ground. Length of the finish, better known as persistence, plus balance, color, and character. With wine bottles, this is the stuff that keeps people coming back time after time, year after year. Whether it's $15 or $1,500 a bottle, the thing that keeps people coming back is what's inside. And so it is with life. Whatever your shape, size, or color, people will either be drawn to or turned off by your character, your fairness, integrity, honesty, a dignity, patience, endurance, and your encouraging spirit, your potential, your willingness to serve others, and your commitment to excellence. Uh, there are also those deep-seated things like uh, humility and fidelity, uh, temperance, courage, justice, patience, industry, simplicity, modesty, and the golden rule, which we find in the good book. It goes something like, do to others what you would want them to do to you. The fact of the matter is, there needs to be a balance between the, the two, a, a blend between the, the internal and the external. So, now let me ask you, what's the purpose of a full bottle of wine? Um, um, many words come to mind. You know, sophisticated, uh, image, friends, delicious, fun, poetic, the buzz you get, family, uh, uh, mate to food, all sorts of things. The reality is, the purpose of a bottle of wine is to be poured out for the benefit and pleasure of others. So, that being said, an empty bottle exists to be filled. Its purpose is to be available. Ha! <laughs> uh, there you go. You don't have to, to be super talented, intelligent, rich, a person of means. You just have to be clean, empty, and available. And actually, you don't even have to worry about being clean. You can begin to get an idea of what the good book says. God just wants an empty bottle that's willing to be blended with Him and willing to be used. God will clean you up and give you a purpose. He will take you with all your unique abilities and attributes and fill your life with a purpose that is uniquely yours. An empty bottle. It's not very valuable, but it takes on a tremendous value because of what's important inside of it. A bottle doesn't give value to the wine. Wine gives value to the bottle. So it is with life. 
when you're looking for your next bottle of wine to buy, you might just ask yourself, what makes a bottle of wine good? Then rather than playing to the whims of the big marketing moguls who know how to play you and me with labels, start with the inside and work out. Well, there you have it. Empty bottles and how they parallel life. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And if this somehow has resonated with you, subscribe and hit the little bell to be notified when I post other videos like this. Also, if you believe this might be helpful to someone else, please share this video with them. I'm sure they would really appreciate it. Until next time, cheers.